Hi, I'm Luke. This is Sam. Sam, if you'd wave to the camera. Hey. So uh, you just got your first job in software not too long ago, yeah? Yeah, the beginning of June. Okay, and it was a paid internship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, full stack internship. Cool, man. Uh, well, congratulations. Well done. Way to go. I'm getting somebody to pay you to write code. Um, yeah, definitely. So uh, what, what were you doing before software? Um, I actually painted cars. I was a collision technician for about 10 years. Okay. Um, and so what made you decide software was what you were going to do? Um, I had a few friends in the industry, not necessarily software engineers, but, you know, like IT, IT roles, um, logistics, things like that. And um, one of the things about the automotive industry, especially like painting cars, is like once you, once you know how to paint a car, you know, uh, it's not much room for like learning. You know, and doing that for like, it's very repetitive over and over, kind of the same thing every day, um, like different, same thing, different colors, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just like, wasn't feeling very challenged. Um, so actually I went on medical leave, uh, kind of like a freak accident, uh, not work related or anything, but I was on medical leave for a few months and yeah, just decided to start like playing around with some like Python and a little bit of like CSS, HTML, React a little bit, or just vanilla JavaScript rather. And yeah, that led me to discover the Turing School of Software and Design here in Denver. Read a bit about that and uh, yeah, did the program and here we are. Cool, man. Well, so when did you make that? Well, I, I guess, when did you start learning on your own? Um, That would have been probably the beginning of 2021. Okay. And then, uh, so you spent a couple months like learning on your own. Yeah. And, and then found a... a coding is it a boot camp yeah yeah it's a boot camp i started that in november of 2021 and uh yeah graduated june of last year okay all right so 2021 i get it um cool and then uh what was the tech stack of the boot camp um it was that's this really interesting question um the cool thing about turing um they break it up they're not like oh we're gonna give you full stack in three months and then kick you out the door um, is seven and a half months and you can either do a back end program or a front end program. And I decided to do the front end program. Um, although after this internship, I kind of feel like I should have done the back end program, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was the front end program and it was, um, they kind of broke it up into four modules and you start out learning like basic JavaScript with some unit testing. Um, and then they move into react with Cypress testing. And then for like the last month or so, they kind of combine both programs and you work on a small project with a backend team as well. Okay. So seven months and it finished up last June. So then June, 2021 to, um, you know, when you got this internship in June, so a month ago, um, you were trying to get into software. So a whole year. Yeah. Ago. Um, yeah, it took from, from graduation to my offer was 11 months, almost exactly. Okay. And uh, what were you doing to pay the bills during that time? Were you still working while you were going through the boot camp and then during that period as well? Um, no, I actually uh, was fortunate enough to have like, enough savings from, you know, my, I kind of uh, went all in with software engineering. You know, I, uh, I sold my house and I started renting. Um, I cashed in my 401k that I'd saved up for like 10 years and just went all in. Um, so I was kind of living off of that. Um, which is nice, um, but also not, you know, now going back in, you're like, I have no savings, but I have all this experience and I was able to dedicate, you know, 11 months to the job search. And I guess it has its advantages being like full time trying to get a job in software um, because I learned a lot of what to do, what not to do, or things that worked for me, things that didn't work for me. So now I have that in the future going forward. Okay. Okay. So at what point did you um, stop working then? Was that as soon as you started the boot camp, or um, did you not go back after that medical leave? Yeah, I never went back after medical leave. I kind of decided this is the direction I want to go. Okay. And um, <laughs> so did you have exactly 11 months of runway then, or is there still some? Uh, of no, there's still, there's still some left out. <laughs> Definitely. Unfortunately. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, cool, man. 
Well, so you you mentioned some of those things that you like worked well for you, didn't work well for you that you're going to be able to use going forward. Um, so I have other questions, but um, why don't you just touch on that for a second? Um, one of the biggest things I discovered was volunteering um, that even if it's like five hours a week that keeps you with some responsibility, you know, you make this commitment to volunteer your time. Um, so that that's a big thing. Like when I graduated, I found myself struggling to be motivated because I wasn't being like pushed to do something. Um, so having that responsibility of volunteering, and that also comes with other folks who are volunteering in the same space, whatever it is, uh, that can teach you things, right? So like you're you're keeping up with your craft and you're also learning as you go. And those are two really important things that actually prepared me for interviews and just like trying to network with folks. Like those are two really important lessons I learned. Oh, and, and I'm sorry, the one lesson was volunteering. And then what was the second one? Oh, just like, um, like being able to stay current with what you're working on and like keep up with practice. Like if you code and you're not coding for a while, you know, then you come back and if you get like a code challenge and you're going to sit there and, you know, be pretty rusty. So like having the, that responsibility and that motivation to like keep you in that space and also like mentorship from other folks in the volunteer space. Okay. And so what kind of volunteering were you doing? Um, it was a uh, front engineering. I uh, was it working with react, um, same stuff that I learned in school. Um, I did a little bit of back end stuff and it was for an animal advocacy project called connect for animals. Okay. And so you, what you just saw that they were looking for volunteers or you were connected to them already. how did you find that? Um, yeah, I actually found them here in town. There was a, like a vegan event going on and they had a little booth and they're, they're more or less just kind of like marketing what they're doing and talking to folks. But um, I ended up having a conversation around engineering and, they were looking for volunteers, which is great. Um, I saw a couple of my friends. There's there are places online where you can like kind of sign up for, um, not really sign up, but like um, you can kind of search for volunteer opportunities and like filter it by like engineering. And so that's another one I started looking into. Um, but then I got the offer and decided to just go with that. There you go. And I, I'm sorry when you said there's a place you can go to like find volunteering opportunities and search by or filter by engineering is that a website yeah yeah i'm pretty i was trying to think of it um but it's called volunteer match and it's not necessarily engineer specific but there are you know you can filter through engineering and there's um there's a lot of things um you can look through different like tech stacks um different like um nonprofits, like what they do if it's something that you're interested in and i found that yeah, pretty helpful. It's something to look into in the future. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll uh, put a, I'll find the link and put it in the description of the video. Um, well, cool, man. So was there anything besides those two lessons that, you know, um, were things you took out of the your 11 month long job hunt processes? Like these are some things that worked well, didn't work well? Um, yeah, I would say that like volunteering was the number one thing that really kept me going and really like interested in you know learning different things uh different languages learning about um like devops stuff was something that i really wanted to focus on while it was a volunteer app and it was very small i got like a little taste of that and then through the internship obviously that's um progressed a lot but um i'm trying to think what else there's just like small things you know like especially like on LinkedIn, people will tell you like, do this, don't do this. And that's, um, it's really overwhelming, you know, cause you're trying to get your job. You don't know if you're like good enough to do this. Um, a lot of people have that feeling, um, especially if you're, you know, 11 months is a long time and I have friends who would get hired and I have a friend who, um, I graduated with, who just got promoted to an engineer too, which is amazing. And like, you see things like that and you obviously don't want to compare your experience, but it's hard not to. So, um, yeah, just like little trial and error things. And like, I don't want, like you said, I don't want to give advice, but like finding things that work for you is really important. And there's ways to do that around, like around the LinkedIn space, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, well, so in that 11 month period, you're looking, um, how many interviews were you able to generate? I had about five interview processes. Yeah. It was not that much. I, um, most of my experiences were surrounded by like code challenges, take home challenges, you know, um, some pretty, some pretty gnarly stuff in there for a, a junior engineer to have to accomplish. Um, and that was really discouraging, but, um, again, looking at other experiences, I have friends who, you know, they, they got an interview face to face with someone and then it was, they kind of just like hit it off. It's really good culture fit and like minimal, like live coding challenges, you know, because I think a lot of people don't realize that like, if you're, especially you're coming from a boot camp and you like, you're like, I don't know if I'm good enough and all of those fears. Um, but what a boot camp does is like teach you how to code. Um, and all these engineering managers, hiring managers, like they know that they know, you know how to code. So I think being able to just have that experience of face to face and seeing if you're a real culture fit, I think that goes a long way. And that's just, I think it was just luck of the draw, honestly, not having that experience too often. And when I did, it was more than one interview. What was more than one interview? Sorry. Um, just having like a face-to-face -face conversation with someone rather than like do this code challenge first and then we'll talk to you after you reach this level. Oh, okay. Um, so you're yeah. saying of those five interviews, the ones that weren't like, hey, do a code challenge first mm -hmm. and do a, per you know, a call first or uh, in yeah. those ones went well. Mm -hmm. I um, actually only had one, only one of those interviews was after a uh, code challenge and that was my only interview. The other ones... The other few that I had um, were like a recruiter call, then a face to face, and then another interview. Um, never ended up getting those roles, but I think those are the types of companies that I think I would value more, just because they understand that you know how to code, and if you're a really good fit, you can learn the rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, oddly enough. Um, a lot of the jobs I've had didn't involve a, a coding challenge, even mm -hmm. at like, you know, several years experience. Like it's just, Hey, you know, we, we had a conversation and, you know, I liked you, you like me like, okay, mm -hmm. let's do it. And it, you know, it's, it's been a good decision for them every time. <laughs> right. Um, right. Oh, man. Cool. Um, so those five interviews you, you generated, how, how did you get each of those? Um, there were two through, through friend, um, and the rest were cold apply. Um, the ones through a friend were kind of like people I graduated with, like, Hey, I have this friend, like I've, I've, they've been hired somewhere. So they said, Hey, like, here's this thought you might be interested. Here's a person to reach out to. And kind of like from that. So a little bit of networking, I don't know if you'd call it networking, like cohort mates that you graduated with really formed a relationship. Um, yeah, so that's. It's kind of half and half okay. between like cold apply and yeah. And so during your job hunt process, what, what was your process for uh, trying to get a job, right? So you're doing some cold apply, mm -hmm. you know, um, you've got um, networking stuff you're doing. Maybe what, what did you, how did you um, come up with, okay, this is what I'm going to do? Um. I think a lot of it was <laughs> it was based on how I was feeling. You know, I had a lot of ups and downs. Um, I would get like, like I said, a couple of those code challenges in like one week and I would fail them. And then I'd feel pretty bad for a little while that I had pick up. Um, but the process that tended to work for me the most was kind of like a daily routine. And obviously this just works for me. Like I was able to like live off of savings for quite a while. Um, but kind of like in the morning, look at a bunch of roles, things that might interest me and kind of bookmark those, uh, reach out to engineers that work there on LinkedIn, um, recruiters, whatever, send a message, give it the rest of the day and around like three. If you haven't, if I hadn't had um, any messages back or anything then I would cold apply. Otherwise, you know, some people would message back and you start a conversation and try to get a referral or build a <clears throat> Build a relationship with that person um and in between that it was you know like a little bit of volunteer time you know me time walking the dog you know being a human um and that was kind of like my daily routine 
Okay. Um, how many jobs would you say you applied to? <laughs> Not an exact number, obviously, but over a couple hundred for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 11 months is a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can apply to a lot of jobs in 11 months. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did average about 12 a week for a while. Um, and I was kind of because I was, I wasn't just like rapid firing applications off. You know, like I said, I would, I would take the morning and like make a list and then reach out to all these people at these companies. And then I would go and like do some like code wars challenges or volunteer stuff, or just read some documentation or something and kind of give it the day for them to like see a message respond. And then, you know, at the end of the day, I would, that's when I would do my applying. Cool, man. Wow. All in. You went all in. <laughs> yeah. It's inspiring. It is. Um, okay, so tell me about the the internship that you started a month ago. Um, tell me about like how you found that opportunity, what the process was like for them reaching out to you. Yeah, again, this was a, a cohort mate had reached out. Um, she said, hey, I used to work with this recruiter um, at this company. Um, they have an internship. I'm not sure if that's something you're interested in. You can check it out. Um, here's her LinkedIn. Uh, reached out and had a couple phone screenings and then just a chat with a senior engineer, a junior engineer and the engineering manager. Um, and that was essentially it. Um, there was, there was a few questions about, um, bugs that I fixed, um, just a few standard, um, technical questions. And after that, I, it was about an hour long. Um, I thanked him. Uh, I sent them all emails separately afterwards, thanking them. Um, one of them got back to me and said, you know, you did a fantastic job. You'd probably be hearing from us. And uh, the next week I had a meeting with the team and they were just kind of here. You, you're going to be our intern. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, it was one of those experiences that, um, that I talk about that, you know, I had so many of those experiences with like, here's this, traverse this binary tree for me and then you can maybe get an interview but this was like a face-to-face -face conversation um we we both got we all got along very well they wanted me on the team and yeah so like that's it was very validating that i got that type of experience <laughs> yeah man yeah when you find them there there you go um mm -hmm. so okay you conversations they said okay so then what, what kind of work have you been doing? Um, yeah, so like I said, I, my only education was the front end development and React. Um, their stack is all like JavaScript, Node.js, React. Um, my first ticket was a back end ticket having to um, grab info from an SQL database. And I was, it took me probably a week to do that one ticket. Um, but after that, oh, it was um, I got kind of settled in and just fixing bugs. Really, um, the team has been pretty cool of just like fully immersing me in what they do. Um, I've been Scrum Master for a week. Um, I presented some something I learned through a knowledge share that the team does every week. Um, it's just stuff that like other people on the team might not know. They might find useful. Um, yeah, I did some like uh, Kubernetes stuff and like EKS upgrades, which um, that was always, that was definitely something I wanted to learn about and um, learning pretty much just like how a company runs, you know, how all of these pieces come together. Cause I, I built small apps, but you know, this plan, I work on the platform team and this platform is probably like 12 repositories coming together to build this one platform. And it's, seeing how that all works was probably the coolest thing about this. Yeah, man. Wow. That sounds like very interesting work. That's going to help set you up for, for the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And speaking of, so you found like they had told you like, Hey, um, you know, we're, we're going to keep you on and put together a package to convert you from an intern to a full-time employee. And then mm -hmm. came back later and said, well, actually, there's no budget for that. So yeah. Um, how long is your internship before it comes to an end? Um, I have three weeks left. Okay. So, so it's a kind of a short one then. How long is that like? Yeah, it was a summer intern, two and a half months. Yeah, it was June, okay. yeah, June 1st, August 10th. Okay. 
Um, and so, you know, now you have this internship under your belt, you have this experience of like, this is how I go about, you know, creating opportunities. That's mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, like, I, I'm sure it's a, a scary place to be, but like kind of <laughs> how long ago did you find out that they're going to not be able to offer you a full-time role? Actually, it was yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so maybe it's still yeah. some processing going on. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, is, I, it does suck. It's, it's really sucks. It's an amazing team and the company does some really good stuff. Um, and this team has definitely like set the bar for me and my expectations for a team moving forward. Um, but honestly, I'm not too upset about it because like the experience gained is amazing. But I think the most important thing is the validation. Like my teammates, we all really got along. They all um, really supported me, told me how well I was doing. Um, even my manager in the knowledge share, um, the way I presented my video, um, she was very impressed. And so that's going to change the way they do their knowledge shares in the future. And like things of that nature, like I had all of this like imposter syndrome. I hate using that word, but um, like I really didn't feel like I could do it. Obviously, after, you know, trying for so long and not really getting anything. But um, this whole experience has been super validating. And like, I definitely know I can do it. And that's more motivation than I ever need now, for yeah. sure. And, you know, that's a, a different experience to like do an internship and then have them say, ah, oh, we're not going to keep you. <laughs> like that, <laughs> right. that's, a, that's a different experience than what you're going through. Like maybe mm -hmm. not much different, but at least there is like you're saying that um, like validation piece of like, yeah, we want to keep you because we like you and, you know, we mm -hmm. like what you're doing. And then to, you know, have it not work out because of funding. Like, I mean, it, it's kind of like a layoff, honestly, is <laughs> <laughs> yeah in a way yeah definitely yeah but um yeah my manager is super supportive um she wrote me a recommendation letter already to one of her friends who's an engineering manager elsewhere and like that's another good takeaway is i have you know eight new referrals eight new connections that um uh, really got along with um uh, and um like just writing recommendations on my linkedin and things like that that they just genuinely care and want to help me out and that's pretty cool yeah, man. No, I had kind of a similar experience. I started as an intern um, at a startup uh, for my very first job in software, right? And then uh, they converted me after three months to a full-time employee. And then a month and a half later, they had to lay me and some other people off. And, you know, it was just crushing. It was, it was mm -hmm. so crushing. And uh, I actually went and got some part-time jobs not doing software because I was like, well, you know, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been so hungry and so excited to get into software. And I was like, I'll do anything to get into software. And uh, then to just have that experience, it, it, you know, it was, it was crushing. And, uh, but I kept on going to a, a Drupal meetup um, in my area that I'd started going to because of that job. And I, I don't know why I kept going, honestly, I, I think it was like my subconscious trying to like, like, you know, maybe it could happen. And mm. then the, I wound up getting an offer to interview and then a, a job offer out of that meetup. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you are such a different candidate today than you were pre internship. Right. And so. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And uh, you've, you've started, right. And you've gotten paid to write code. So. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, definitely. You're no longer pre job, pre experience. So that's awesome. Wow. Cool, man. Um, so you got the uh, the uh, recommendations. I I would <laughs> I would suggest you bug all eight of those people for recommendations. <laughs> like, hey, yeah. you number seven, you have not left a recommendation yet. And, uh, <laughs> where's your letter? I need it. Print it out. I'm not printing it. You print it. Um, cool, man. Well, I can't thank you enough for sharing your story. Um, are there any other things from that, um, you know, 11 months or the internship that were like aha moments or, um, you know, they just stuck with you and you think you'll remember them for a long time because of, you know, they struck you. Um, I think probably from the internship, the 11, the, the job search was, it was so grueling like that 
my biggest takeaway from that is just not giving up. And I'm really glad I didn't. And also, it, I don't want to say it was worth not being able to get anything for so long, but I really did end up in like the, the best possible situation for myself. And that goes to the internship. Um, and what I said, like about the team, um, as, as hungry as I was and how, and as anyone is really as like someone just getting in to the industry, um, it is really important to find that team that works for you and that company that really values you. Um, I've heard a lot of really good stories, and a lot of really bad stories of uh, teams and companies and cultures. And like I said, this was like the best possible situation for me. So I think as important it is to get that job, it's also important to make sure it's right for you. Mm -hmm. That's probably yeah. the biggest takeaway. <laughs> Another parallel is that the, that job I got laid off from, I loved it. It was like the gold standard. And then I like took that into interviews. Like I would ask questions about the team I would, you know, potentially be joining because I wanted it to be as good as that. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to have <laughs> your first experience be really, really good. Cause then you compare everything. Um, mm -hmm. that, and it, you know, it when it's perfect <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> replicate but and uh, i don't know I've, I've really enjoyed all the jobs i've had so yeah man yeah good advice um well thank you for sharing your story and uh i'll hit stop here and all right yeah, no problem man